Okay, I'll make the water and go. <laughs> okay. We on? Yeah. Oh. Well, welcome everyone to the meeting. It's uh, called Meeting to Order. It's a uh, regular meeting, April 9th. Uh, the agenda and all the minutes were circulated. Uh, is there anything you want to add to the agenda? I would like to add um, to new business under number six, beautification grants. Okay. And I would like to add under number seven, vegetation management. Okay. Um, any other additions? Uh, any, so we can have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Okay. All those in favor, <laughs> say aye. 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 <laughs> Here. So, uh, yeah, any declarations of conflicts of interest based on that agenda? Hearing none, uh, we'll do the um, previous minutes. So, the minutes were circulated from our March 26 meeting. Uh, I need a motion to approve those minutes, please. I'll approve the minutes from the last regular meeting, March 26. I'll second. Ready for the question? All those in favor say aye. 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 Contrary <laughs> minded, carry. So, is there any business arising from the minutes uh, from the last meeting? I'm wondering about an update with the ND Power Smart Meters. We're going to reach out to see if they'll come to our area. Yes, so we talked to them and they are going to get back to me tomorrow morning with uh, some dates next week. He's saying either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Uh, it'll be between six and eight at night. But we just need to determine what day works best for him as a location that we'll let them know. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be posted on yeah. Facebook. Yes. Yeah, well, probably next Wednesday would be. Yeah, we're reaching out to them about Smart Meters. Why don't we just reach out to them about Vegemating? Vegetation management at the same time. Well, we'll talk yeah. about that in the yeah. 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 but it's a good point. So, but on the smart meters, uh, with next Wednesday, he, we were talking to the guy today, and they're meeting in Plash Rock on Tuesday night. I wouldn't be available Wednesday. But, so, yeah, is Wednesday okay or Monday? Or? I'll just send it out because he, he, has, has, to to he has to tell us what day. He has to tell us what day. So. It'll be a public meeting, and uh, we'll try to get a central location for it. So, does that give enough notice for the community, though, or should we do it the next week? I guess maybe he can give us a list of dates. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah we'll try to days, yeah. push back. So, yeah, yeah he's going to let us know tomorrow morning because he's meeting with that the manager. They're doing a meeting down in Albert County tonight. So, get that date, and we'll, if it's later, uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Could be next week, and then that would be <coughs> okay. Um, just regarding from the old minutes, I'd just like to make mention that uh, we had some difficulties with our technology here last week, and the feed cut out. Uh, I heard a number of uh, comments in the community that perhaps uh, we had intentionally shut the feed off. We certainly hadn't. Um, Sometimes the internet in our community is not great, as everybody here knows. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that people people were aware that we hadn't actually pulled the plug on any presentations last meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Yeah, we just had technical difficulties last yeah. meeting, and um, that happens. And we had a really good presentation by Mr. Amos. Yes, that's right. Our property tax assessments and. And uh, actually, it was really informed, and unfortunately, it wasn't recorded. No, apologize to that people watching. The technology is a wonderful thing when it works, correct? So, no, all of our, all of our minutes and everything is open and posted online. And, and if anybody has any questions about anything, they can always reach out to the town office or an individual counselor. <coughs> okay, anything else from the previous minutes? Um, updates. Good. Um, okay. Um, just want, I just want to put a plug in there again for that to help feed our students. That is April 20th. Uh, that will be happening before our next meeting. So that's at the Knights of Columbus, Torso Rotary Club, doing an evening of dinner and a fundraiser for We Got Your Back program at the River Valley, uh, throughout the River Valley. So. Those tickets are on sale through the Rotarians. Okay. Presentations. <coughs> presentations tonight. 
So we have um, we have uh, correspondence. There's the community food drive. So I'm going to read a letter here from uh, uh, Dear Mayor. I have organized a food drive for May the 4th in Woodstock and 12 other communities throughout New Brunswick. Uh, via congregations of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. All donations collected in the Crown County will be delivered to Valley Food Services in Woodstock. So there is currently a significant need for donations to Valley Food Services as demand is outpacing supply. So this is not really a heavy lift. It's pretty easy. We just need people, youth, teams, church to carry this out. Um, I did this with a group of 30, 30 year old uh, youth in, in uh, Hampton a few years ago. We had three pickup trucks of local food for the Hampton Food Basket. If you think there are any service groups or local congregations that might be interested in participating, please let me like know. And it would be wonderful if there could be a coordinator or a point person designated for Carroll North, as I will be coordinating in Woodstock. And that is from Catherine Hand. So we can post that on the website, and if you're, you guys can, you know, you know of any groups that might want to be interested in helping that out, May the Fourth. I will, uh, I'll actually spearhead that if that's alright. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councilor Bradstreet's going to take the lead on that. That's great. So they have some advertisement. The uh, they sent along with that. Um, so it's like a door knocker. Door knocker. Okay. It, so it looks like what what it is is they hit, they you print the door knocker and and then people if you're going to donate and then the the drivers that are picking up the donations driver in the community and look for those those signs to pick up the food. Mm. Is that what that's what I was understanding? Yeah, find info, put perishable bags. You can yeah. attach this door handle easy identification, leave bag outside the door, okay, that starts at 10 minutes. Yep. So there's a letter here, Councilor Bradstreet, that will, uh, you can reach out to that person and coordinate that. That'd be great. May the 4th. So next letter is from the Minister of Public Safety. It is a letter, it was addressed to myself and the Mayor of Hartland and the Chair of our Police Review Committee. And Basically, this is a letter, uh, I'll read it in the public record. So, uh, dear District of Carlton North and Hart, uh, this is a response to your November 15th, 2023 proposal for an alternative, alternative, sorry, police service delivery model for the District of Carlton North and Ireland. The department has reviewed the proposal and provides the following key observations. The proposal calls for a substantial financial investment and administrative dependency on other police forces. This includes financial support for the startup and capital cost, as well as mutual aid agreements with police agencies as mandated central policing services and specialized services. As Minister of Public Safety, I fully understand that the transition to a potential standalone police force would be costly. However, the Police Act does state that it is every municipality's responsibility to provide and maintain adequate police services within their municipality. This also means financial responsibility to support the police force. Furthermore, in an attempt to address the concerns of visibility and police presence in the community, the proposal also identifies the requirements of police officers living within the communities. Recruitment and retention of police officers is certainly a living challenge for all police forces in the province and across the country. Hiring and retaining 20 police officers for this new police force would prove quite challenging. <laughs> Government has invested a great deal in making our community safer. If these investments are currently being implemented, it will change how policing services are delivered and paid for in a province like investing in the increase of 15% of frontline RCP resources in provincial policing communities. We are also in the process of modernizing the New Brunswick policing standards finalizing the impacts of the local governance reform on policing, creating a new police building model for communities policed under the Provincial Police Services Agreement, developing a provincial standard for specialized policing services. With so many activities associated to policing taking place right now, setting or standing up is the word, uh, a new police force with so many unknowns would be challenging at this time. 
For these reasons, I regret to inform you at this time, I am unable to support the creation of a new police force. We are open to having further discussions regarding your proposal, should you wish to receive further information. Signed by the So that's the letter. We circulated at the council anyway. Yeah. Any comments on that? Or? So that paragraph, the second one, we'll ask guys when they invested, telling us 15% yeah. for 15% of this and that and the other thing. Can we possibly get a breakdown from the RCP where the two and a half million we already pay goes? Because we've asked for that multiple times and that zero response on that. Yeah, we. I mean, they're they talking won't. about where this goes and that goes. Where does it go? They won't. They won't break it right down. Where the toll is not. So no. we we pay two million dollars right now for policing, and uh, we can't get any information as we requested. So as to the number of members, how I am employed. Uh, you're just going on. So I don't, just because we received the letter, it's, uh, we never responded to this letter, and, and we're going to be hired on to see if we'll respond in some way. But basically, uh, we were asking for financial support on the capital transition, right? And we were willing, we were looking at paying our full, full annual rate every year, like we pay house million dollars. We can, we can support with the budget we have now. The budget have for the RCP. It was only for transitional capital cost, and so that's for them to decide what they want to do with that. But the second point, I, I, do not, I don't agree with the recruiting of your officers. Um, our committee, led by John Winter, is, was receiving calls almost weekly of people wanting to come and work in a municipal police force in a rural area like Hardman, Carl Moore, and uh, we had another member on our committee that was receiving calls for people coming back from Ontario. So having people living in our community and working in our community wasn't uh, wasn't really a challenge at all. Uh, that's their opinion, but it's not reality. And the third paragraph about all these things they want to they're doing, like Councilor Watson said, a fifteen percent increase to RCP resources. We don't know how that translates. Uh, we have no description of what that means uh, for people patrolling here in Carroll North. And the other issue is uh, the policing standards. Well, they are modernizing the standards. That's fine. Uh, the local government reform of all these communities are going through this. that have added LSDs to their existing communities like Bluestock, Fredericton, Grand Falls, etc. are all looking at expanding their own municipal police forces. And that's what that means there in terms of local government's reform. So a uh, new policing billing model, that's for them to decide. That's nothing to do with us. And developing a policing standard for specialized policing services. Well, it doesn't matter where you live in the province of Brunswick. The RCMP is the provincial police force. And if there's an issue, all the resources go to that to that area, right? So whether they have a municipal force, whether they have a municipal force, have a response, any type of force. And there's no building being done. So but that's something they're looking into. So these are things they're looking into. Uh, as they mentioned, uh, these changes are happening right as they we speak. So to, to set up a new new model right now for for Harden and Carl North, they're saying that for all those reasons that they're not ready. But they're, they're not saying never, but they're not saying at, they basically said at, at this time. So you can read between the lines, at this time means not in, not before the battle. So, <laughs> so uh, but I'll let them, we'll respond to it and we'll keep an open dialogue with them because there's merit to our proposal, but we never responded yet because we just received the letter basically at the end of March. So. My fear is with the 15% increase they're discussing that the cost of that associated with that is going to be covered by the provincial government for the first two years. Um, I can I can almost surmise where the what the addition to our cost will be on that third year. I'm suspecting it'll be 15% from our current two million. Yeah. That would be my best case scenario. If you're going to increase services by 15%, you're probably going to increase the pricing model 15% as well. And then we all of a sudden we become very expensive. We're already very expensive. We have a very expensive yeah. service here now, which we believed we could do cheaper or as equally for yeah. the same kind of money with more service, 24 hour service, with more officers. So I was disappointed by this response, certainly. 
Yeah. It is disappointing. That, but that's the reality of provincial governments that they work on their own timeline, not on our timeline. So we'll respond and we'll keep the dialogue open and we'll just keep the council informed. But the, the bottom line is the four issues that we originally addressed, we wanted to address, still haven't been addressed. So, like the cost certainty, which Councillor Oaks just talked about. We have no idea what's going to up next year. We, do, we're, we have no say in that. Like we have no control about those costs. <clears throat> and the other one is visibility and presence. There's still some during the day, but there's very lacking at night in terms of patrols. What's lacking is a none uh, active patrols at nighttime. And the other one is community engagement. Uh, they're doing some of that, which I give them credit. There's, there's, it's been better in the last six months. <laughs> But it's really when they don't live in this community, they, they don't really have the pulse of the community. They they come in, they engage, and then they leave. Mm -hmm. If you're living here, you, you you go to the arenas, you go to the convenience store, you have a feel for things, right? And the last one, the fourth one, is the detachment. We for thirteen thousand people, Carroll North and Heartland is uncalled. It's unreal that we don't have an detachment. And if we had a detachment here, people would could go to that place. They would, people would be working here in Florence and Bristol and Heartland and surrounding areas. So those four items still haven't been addressed. None of them. And in that letter, but they're looking at everything on a provincial scale. So we'll just let them look at it and when they're ready to we've done our part. Do we've, we've, we've done all we possibly can. Yeah, we can't do any more. And uh, anyway. We'll respond to the letter and, and keep working with it is all we can do. Any other comments on that? Okay, next one. Uh, next one is Deputy Mayor is going to read this one. Okay. We're alternating. <laughs> <laughs> so this email is from the, let's see, it's for Disability Awareness Week from the Premier's Council. Good afternoon. Disability Awareness Week 2024 is quickly approaching. Disability Awareness Week continues the tradition of National Access Awareness Week, first established in 1988 to promote better community access for people with disabilities. This campaign happened in response to a request from Rick Hansen following his Man in Motion World Tour. For 10 years, a national committee coordinated planning for the week in communities all over Canada. In 1998, a decision was made in New Brunswick to continue celebrating an annual awareness week, but with a new name to ensure that all issues related to persons with a disability could be promoted. 2024 marks the 37th consecutive annual disability awareness week in New Brunswick. Attached are the 2024 DAW, which is the Disability Awareness Week, proclamations for your municipality. Additionally, municipalities declaring DAW are encouraged to organize or participate in a DAW-related event. In the event that your municipality does not read proclamations during council meetings, there are other ways for your municipality to participate in this early awareness week. So the week is May 26th to June 1st. So we have, are we going to read this proclamation today? Probably closer to the main I guess if we want to, yeah, we can we can read it closer to the date if yeah. that's what we decide to do. Mm -hmm. So the proclamation just is suggesting is saying we support the theme embracing accessibility and inspiring <clears throat> change. So we should look up um, what kind of if we read that proclamation, then we're encouraged to organize or participate in the DAW related event. So maybe we should look at what the events are mm -hmm. before we read the proclamation. And we'll bring that back up in the meeting in May. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions on that? Comments? Next one is uh, from the CN. So it's, Dear Mayor Harvey, I'm ready to introduce myself as CN's new manager of public affairs for Atlanta, Canada. I'm based in Moncton. My mandate is to help facilitate positive and proactive communications between CN and Atlantic Canadian communities in which our railway operates. To that end, I'm looking forward to engaging with you and your staff on matters involving CN. 
My contact details are at the bottom of this email, and please share with those you think is relevant within your council. I spent my initial weeks on the job getting up to speed internally and looking forward to getting to know you and the communities you serve. For general public inquiries over the report and railway emergency, I have enclosed an attached document that can be distributed to the public. Please share it with your communication staff. And it's from uh, Tom Bateman. He's the manager just as April 3rd, just last week. So they, there's an annual vegetation program that CN does. And we'll, we can survey all this to council, where they do right away, you know, right away vegetation management along the rail, obviously. And uh, other inquiries about, there's a public uh, number there to call for any type of uh, inquiry about railways. And then actually the railway, as we know, gets from Jennifer. And it's something I think we should reach out to him and maybe uh, invite him to come up and speak to council because I think the I think the railways are going to be more important in the future and they, they have siding potential in Jennifer. And uh, I think it's we should be taking advantage of that and have a conversation. Yeah. We'll, so we should invite him to come up and meet the council. And uh, they have invested in their Deersdale siding where they haul um, chips mm. more now yeah. than they used to, rather than trucking to us. And if we have a, potentially, if we have a meeting, like one of our community meetings in Jennifer someday now, yep. whenever that may be, last year we did a tour of the tree nursery, but I'd really like to do a tour of Deersdale. And uh, I know it's, a little, it's outside our boundaries, but all the people who work there from Jennifer. Or glass for generally. Uh, and look at the rail siding that they have, it's amazing. So, anyway, if that could be an option. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's attached to some inquiry. We can post that online too. Anyway, yeah, we, we'll send them a letter to invite them to come. And uh, the next one, I'll get into the one of these. Sure. Letter from Dr. Colin Walker and Dr. Bruce Walker. Uh, Mayor Harvey and District of Carlton North Council, we would like to thank you very much for hosting the meet and greet at the Norway Carlton Recreation Complex this past Saturday. It meant a great deal for, to both of us, as well. Many who were there were glad that the event was held. Sincerely, Colin Walker and Bruce Walker. I want to thank Council Bradstreet and all Council. I couldn't be there, but uh, I think there's something else was that they were there. And Councilor Bradstreet helped spearhead that. And so, and our clerk was there. Was Pretty well, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it was well organized. It was Thank you for that. Good lunch. And uh, Colin and Bruce certainly were very appreciative. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a good deal. Good idea to work with Councilor Bradstreet. No. <laughs> and, and that was, the, of course, that was the evening. And the, Follow up supper at the nice plumbers for the back. Well, throwing the snow again, snow again. <laughs> yeah. the snow snow. But all that's good, and I see where they donated the proceeds for that for River, Canada, River Valley Cancer Support for four thousand dollars. So that's good. Okay, policies and bylaws. We have this one we have to read into the record. The, yeah, this is just the second and third reading. You actually only have to read the. Uh, the title starting on page two. The title on page two? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just the information itself. Just anything that's involved. Right here? Yeah. This title. Yep. Yeah. All these things. Yeah. So this is the bylaw respecting the establishment and implementation of the emergency measures response plan. Bylaw number S-2. So this is second for the reading and it's uh there'll be a standing committee of council, um, declaration of this state of local emergency, a general clause, enumeration, the powers, and uh, indemnity, sorry, penalties, severability, enforcement, repeal, and uh, those are the clauses that I have circulated the council. It was also supposed to be one second, two weeks. Yeah. No, okay. So that would be the second, third reading tonight. Yes. So I have to read it again. Yeah. 
about it. Essentially, it's updating the, the emergency policy, incorporating the entire district, yes. and just the the key the key contact people that need to be contacted in the state of emergency, and the staff work with EMO and yeah. fire chiefs, and worked on this for quite a long time, and mm -hmm. just so the public understands what this is. And we'll post on our website too, <coughs> and it's all on the website for anybody to read. Yeah, you're right. It's more of an internal document of governance and, and protocols and stuff. Mm -hmm. This is steps we would take yeah. as, as a district, not yeah. what the citizens would have to be worried about what they would have to do. So. Mm -hmm. And it was somewhat done before. It was a lot of updating. Yes. So yeah. 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 It's not like it was reinventing the wheel. No. It was it was done. No. It was just adding things mm -hmm. and changing things mm -hmm. and contact yeah. information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, it's good, good work. Um, so under new business, there's uh, some items here. Um, so we have the Community Investment Operating Grants uh, approvals. So I'll call on Deputy Mayor Hansel to talk about this and, and have a discussion with Council. So this was the operating grant um, those on our website that uh, nonprofit community groups could apply for. So this is to help, you know, the each community halls pay for power bills and operating expenses. What well, some of the things that they normally would have received when they were in LSDs, we did this last year as well. So I would like to make the motion to approve the following operating operating grants. So the these groups, yes, these groups apply send in their application and then this is what council has approved. So I'll start with the motion and then I'll list the each grant. Whereas the District of Carlton North has budgeted funds for the Community Investment Fund, annual operating grants, and whereas the District of Carlton North recognizes the importance of nonprofit organizations who through their active membership provide foundational support in many communities in our area. The District of Carlton North the ongoing efforts of our volunteers who serve a vital role in providing valuable programs and services throughout our district. Be it resolved that the District of Carlton North has reviewed all applications received and has approved the following. That Argyle Community Hall will receive $2,000. Beachwood Community Park will receive $3,500. Glasgow Rec Centre will receive $3,500. Juniper Community Centre will receive $3,500. Juniper Rec Center will receive $3,500. Lakeville Community Hall will receive $3,500. Mount Pleasant Community Hall will receive $3,500. Stickney Rec Center will receive $3,500. Upper Kent Rec Center will receive $3,500. Bath Knights of Columbus Hall will receive $3,500. Centerville Elks Club will receive $3,500. Centerville Legion will receive $3,500. Florence Hill Kinsman will receive $3,500. Florence Hill Legion number 37 will receive $3,500. Aberdeen Snowville Club will receive $2,000. Carlson County Toy Run will receive $2,000. Carlson Snowville Club will receive $2,000. Mountain View Snowville Club will receive $2,000. The Andrew and Warren McCain Art Gallery will receive $10,000. Potato World will receive $10,000. The Florence Hill Curling Club will receive $5,000 for a total of $80,500. Good. They have a second. I'll second that. Yeah. So, on the question, any comments on that? Or anybody want to make a comment? So, it's good that the Deputy Mayor clarified these were only the monies that 
previously had been provided a lot of times by the provincial government and local LSDs, and some of that funding disappeared for a number of these organizations, and some have been added because we thought it was the right thing to do as a district to bring the district together uh, to be able to include communities from all five wards. And uh, I think as council, we've been in agreement on that very long. This is essentially very close to the amount of money we gave out, 7500 7, we gave out a year ago. We had budgeted for this mm -hmm. when we did our budget last year. And this is not money that we can, this is money that we had planned and, and allocated for this. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel it's very important just for our volunteers in this area. They are the reason that we have so many wonderful events and wonderful community centers and groups. As we can see from the the uh, Eclipse event from yesterday, again, the different organizations that were there to help, it's, it's so great to see the volunteers come out to help. And then, uh, you know, it wouldn't be possible without the volunteers in our community. So, exactly. oh, absolutely. Thank you to all of them. Yeah, thank you. As a person who sits on a volunteer group in my community, Insurance is a costly thing, so this really helps cover insurance on top of the many other things that we do have to pay for and raise money for as volunteers. So it's greatly appreciated. Okay. Um, yeah, motion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Contrary, my carried. So, next item is um, new business election in Brunswick. Uh, there's local government by elections. And I just want to bring out everyone's attention. There's a there's a vacancy in uh, District Carl North for uh, Ward Number Four, and that is that's all these elections are being handled by elections in Brunswick. But the deadline uh, for nominations is Friday, April 12th at 2 p.m. And uh, they open up their office April 2nd. And Bristol at the uh, Welcome Center. And uh, like I said, we have no say in any of this. It's done by lectures to Brunswick, but so the deadline was only 10 days after they opened up. So if yeah. you, you know, if you're talking yeah. to people uh, with the name, make sure that we put it on our website, I think. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so we're, we're, you know, talk to people that, that are interested in running. They, they have their nominations, which is, Certain amount of signatures, I think it's probably 25. Anyway, they need to go online to a form and they want to run for that ward, they can they have to live in the, that ward, which is Florence of Bristol, the old Florence Bristol town and parts of Oakland, down River Bank and Stickney. Um, but you'd have to look on the map. And uh, yeah, election like in Brunswick is a good good source of information for them, yeah. or they can stop at, at the community center. Yeah, the welcome center and get information there. We're interested in that. But I will say, I'm a little disappointed that this wasn't put out to public a lot sooner uh, than just open up the office one day and giving somebody 12 days. 10 to realize. Realize. 10 days, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sorry. To realize that, hey, do I want to run? Or do you really want to you think about it? Like, there was, we knew there was a by election coming, but to, to give somebody 10 days, I, I think that's, uh, I don't think that's enough time. Mm -hmm. well, I agree, I agree. Yeah. So if you're in Ward 4 and you would like to run for council, please get your Elections name in. This is Ward 4. We have until Friday to get your nominations, go get your paperwork. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Ward 4 is the more school Bristol area, just so people are... And that would be President Road. This yeah. is yeah. the map yeah. of Ward 4. Yeah. It does. Well, should be uh, get your name should be hop down to... River Bank, correct, yeah. and a little bit across the west side of the river, yeah. just over to Perkins Way. Correct. It's yeah. the old town limits of Florence and Bristol, and Oakland, and Stickney, and River Bank. Okay, all the way down to the yeah. But the map is there on Western Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Go have an election. So next item is appointment of uh, chief administrative officer, and then uh, I'll uh, open that up. To, Discussion and Councilor Connor. So I'm just going to read a motion to appoint the new CAO. Whereas Council has determined that Amy McIntosh possesses the necessary qualifications, skills, and experience to fulfill the duties and responsibilities of the CAO position, 
and whereas the appointment of Amy as the CAO of the District of Carlton North will contribute significantly to the continued growth, development, and prosperity of our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the District, District of Carlton North that Amy McIntosh is hereby appointed as the Chief Administrative Officer of the District of Carlton North, effective immediately. Amy McIntosh's duties as CAO include those duties set out on the job description for the position of CAO and such other duties that may be assigned or delegated by council from time to time. Amy McIntosh's appointment as CAO shall be governed by the, by the bylaw respecting the authority and responsibilities of the Chief Administrative Officer, CAO, Council Bristol Bylaw Number 3, as adopted by the District of Carlton North Bylaw Number A-3. The Mayor and Clerk are authorized to execute any necessary documents and agreements to okay, this appointment. The Council expresses its confidence in Amy McIntosh's ability to effectively lead the administrative operations of the municipality and direct her to perform all duties and responsibilities of the CAO position with diligence, integrity, and dedication. This resolution shall take effect immediately upon passage. Congratulations, Amy. We are very happy to have you. Oh, we have a second here? I'll second that. Okay. So, uh, probably should have a vote on that motion. Congratulations, <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <Okay. laughs> after. <laughs> so, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Congratulations, Amy. Thank you. So, yeah. She's got at least one day. So. <laughs> So uh, I'll just make one statement, and then it's uh, Amy's been working here for, since July of last year uh, in a role of administration manager, and then she stepped up in October. It's almost been six months, so uh, filling in for the that CAO position or that that manager position. Um, and yeah, and I, I work with her every day, and I'm very impressed. And I know council is. Uh, with the commitment she brings to the table and the openness and the communications. And I see that with staff. I really see it with staff and that openness and directness. And, and I know staff appreciates it and all the leadership she, she provided the staff because there's a lot going on. I trust me. <laughs> and we know that as council, there's a lot of files and a lot of projects and a lot of back and forth. And that's, we're busy and uh, that's good. So I really want to congratulate Amy, and um, I know she'll continue just doing what she does and, and working with council, and we're very honored and pleased to have her. So thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> so the next item is uh, appointment of an assistant clerk, uh, and I'll have a motion for that. I read a motion to appoint an assistant clerk. Be resolved that Raina Redeker Having demonstrated the necessary qualification and experience, be appointed as the assistant clerk of the District of Carlton North, effective April 9th. Be it further resolved that the assistant clerk shall assist the clerk in fulfilling their duties, including but not limited to administrative tasks, record keeping, responding to public inquiries, and any other duties as assigned by the clerk or the governing body. I have a seconder. I'll second that. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, my carry. So, yeah, that's great. Grand graduation ring, and uh, she's also put some, she's now. also put forth a lot of effort. Plus, she's yeah, in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. and she yeah. works here. Works time. They're staying on a lot of different things. I know, I know she's great help for you. Oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, so congratulations to her. Mm -hmm. So the next item is uh, just a motion to. Uh, Transfer funds from our gas tax fund uh, to our operating account fund. So there's a new motion to do that. I'd like to make a motion to approve movement of funds from the gas tax fund to the general operating fund. We need to make a motion to move three hundred fifty thousand dollars from the gas tax fund to the general operating fund. Good. Uh, seconder. I'll second that. Okay. 
Okay, <laughs> Councillor Stewart. Second. And uh, any questions on that um, before we vote on it? So that's not new money we're allocating for anything. That that that's money that we're that we'd agreed to pay, but the, that's being moved. Yeah, in, in a, to, to, to to fulfill previous yeah commitment we made yeah. from last year. Yeah. yeah, we need to have a motion anytime we transfer money from a capital like a gas tax fund account that's sitting there to our operating account, which all the bills are paid from the operating right. account. So the, it's just a transfer. We need a motion because the you know. That's the auditing process. You, have to you just don't want people to transfer money. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, and it has to be used for capital purposes, right? So that's why we're doing the promotion. So, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Not very minded. Nay. The next item is uh, beautification uh, operator grants or beautification. So I just wanted to bring this up as well. Um, next week we'll be opening up applications for the beautification grants. We did this last year, and again, it's for not-for-profit community groups. If they want to, it's a it's a fund for up to five hundred dollars to be used for beautification of their property. So examples have been flowers or signage. Um, and anyone that had received funds last year, we are going to be in contact with you for a picture from for what you did at your at your um, site last year. And then that's the requirement for us to see what you guys what you guys did, and for us to be able to share on social media. So that will be going live online next week, and probably midweek. It should be live. <clears throat> That was good. No, I, I just want to add that it's uh, important like a lot of the community groups uh, they can apply for this and then like last year was the first year as the deputy mayor said that they can it could be for landscaping, it could be for signage, it could be for plant flowers, uh, painting, mm -hmm. exterior painting, anything that would beautify the property or, or make it uh, a better curb appeal, so to speak. So uh, I know it's not a lot of money, but it's a small gesture that we feel is important for any community group uh, organization that they can take this money with their volunteer labor, uh, buy some materials, and uh, add some uh, beautification to their facility or to their property to that to that degree. So yeah, I just encourage you to apply. And then, as the deputy mayor said. If you have any pictures from last year, the nine groups last year applied and received five hundred dollars. So send in some pictures and, and send in this year what you plan on doing with that money is just in a, on the application. So we if we think it's important that we um, all our community groups can ha have access access to that. So that's good. Anything else on that? So That'll be up next week and check in the website. Um, next item is uh, is uh, power disruptions and vegetation management along our our MB power lines. Uh, I know last historically in the last couple of years it's been we have a we have fourteen hundred kilometers square kilometers in our district and there's a lot of roads that have are heavily treed that have power lines on them, obviously. Different parts of the district, from Bloomfield to Oxford to uh, Upper Camp to Jennifer to Stickney, and all these points in between. So we, we, you know, I think it's important that we we get a hold of, that we reach out to Envy Power and, and have some type of meeting, and so that we can uh, stress the importance because these power interruptions are not just once or twice a year; they're, they're they they flicker out different times, right? When the, when the trees come down on the line, they'll, they'll lose power to a certain community for could be a few hours, could be you know, it could be half a day, right? So, so we, we need to be doing more preventive tree pruning and uh, vegetation management, and uh, we, so I think it's important to reach out and, and be power and uh, have a conversation. As Councillor Connor brought this up, and uh, anybody else want to jump in on that? And, like we'll definitely invite them to come up and talk to us. I just know in, in my ward last summer, the fire department had to respond three, four, five times, approximately to uh, uh, trees coming down the lines and fires happening, and them having to spend a few hours there for any power to respond. And 
it seems like when the wind blows a lot in my area, the trees are in, intertwined with the power line. Yeah. So it's just constant power outages and with the storms getting worse, um, now it could be two to three days before people are reconnected, mm. which is unacceptable. I think the other thing that we can talk a little bit about meaning when we should send it in the letter is to uh, is is they should explain and they can do that graphically uh, the coming from transmission to distribution that some of the different ways that power comes in the district of Carroll North because it, it, it there's just not one main line there's multiple main lines of transmission that come into Juniper or Bloomfield or Oxford or it, and it comes in a different way so you can have a transmission line down in one part of our district won't have power, but the other part would, right? So uh, it'd be nice to understand that a little better for as counselors in their own wards. Uh, you know, uh, we should all understand it because the line, the power coming into the Juniper comes in three different directions from uh, based on the industry and based on different factors. So, so anyway, yeah, we should uh, we can explain that too. Uh, the distribution transmission lines and go from there. Yeah, so we'll send it out and be powered and, and uh, read tomorrow or next day and <clears throat> have that conversation with us. Yes, anything else uh, on that? So we'll go to council statements. I'll start with Councillor Stewart. Well, I haven't done a lot. Uh, I watched the event. It was amazing. Uh, Thursday night, April 11th, at uh, Home Collect, there are 100 women who care evening. Hopefully, the veterans haven't supported it. It's a uh, great fundraiser. And that concludes my report. I just want to say that uh, I, I'm sad. Uh, Councilor Stewart was, lost his mother during this time the last couple of weeks. And uh, that's always a difficult time. But, uh, yeah, so I was, anyway, I just wanted to convey our sympathies and condolences to, to Mike and on behalf of the council and on behalf of the district and uh, wish you all the best and, well, your family. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Connor. Um, I had four dog implants in today. So I have four of those conveys to Amy. She did. Or those are the right people. Yes. <laughs> um, I held the eclipse event yesterday. It was a phenomenal day. It was truly amazing. It was a great day that went out without a hitch, I feel. And I held with two chasey games to us. And that's it for me. Uh, Councilor Oak, oh, sorry. So I'm just waiting on you to call on me. I'm like a little kid in kindergarten, wait to be two of you to call on me. Uh, so I played cards on Wednesday night. This is traditional for me. Uh, and Bloom Fest meeting on uh, Thursday night and attended it with Councilor Connor. Um, we officially have 14 balloons on. We've increased the balloons by three by three this year. Um, hopefully a few more flights up. Um, and had Easter, uh, had Easter with my family, and uh, some one of my boys were home. They all stayed to school over the Easter break. Uh, enjoyed breakfast at the Sugar Moon Cookhouse over Easter with all my family. Uh, spoke to our last Thursday. Spoke to our local MLA uh, to express my displeasure in regards to the dismissal of our municipal police force plan. Um, received a complaint. Um, uh, in Macdosh Hill and Bath, we got a call, and uh, it is the season. I uh, mean, uh, make this crew be around as quickly as they can. Uh, there's calls issued everywhere in the in the district, not just in Bath. Uh, Pass that along though to to maintenance and uh, and uh, help with the setup on Sunday of the arena and prep for the eclipse. I uh, watched the eclipse on Monday uh, at the Florence Arena and enjoyed the evening of entertainment provided by James Mollinger and Colonel Chris Hatfield. That was a fantastic event, and I'd like to thank all the staff and, and, and all the council were there helping out. And, and uh, it made it a fantastic experience, really. And uh, I'd like to reach out and say special thanks to 
Sharon Johnson and, and Kim for the extra that they did, and, and Sharon had a great job. And, uh, it was really well done. I never heard a negative thing from anybody. It went off of the history. The weather cooperated, certainly, and everybody seemed to enjoy themselves. And that's all I have to say. Good. Councilor Um, So, I also want to say that this was Honestly, like you have expectations, and they're just they were completely blown for me. It was absolutely magical. Um, and then following up with that uh, later that evening, going to the presentation with James Mullinger and Colonel Chris Hadfield, exceptional. Um, and a huge thank you to everyone who helped set it up. Um, it was very inspiring. Um, last weekend, I went to the Stu Volleyball Cup, um, which is at St. Thomas University. It's like Canada's uh, largest high school volleyball tournament, I think. Um, the varsity girls placed, they, we were in the quarterfinals, and uh, I said the JV boys placed in semifinals, and after that, I'm a little bit shaky. So, the JV girls got the semifinals, just the varsity boys. Yeah. Well, uh, it was definitely a tough competition. Um, but I have to say we played really well. <laughs> um, and then I also had the pleasure yesterday and the honor to present um, a gift to Colonel Chris Hadfield on behalf of um, the College North students. I um, got to shake his hand twice. That's <laughs> um, a great moment. What did you buy? Um, well, the <laughs> shot class uh, made like a cutting board. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they like, laser engraved the College North High school logo. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it looked really cool. He brought it out and it was, yeah, and it was um, a beautiful piece of work. Yeah, yeah that's good. Um, there's uh, all of our um, schools from the area who presented um, a gift to him. Yeah. Just to recognize that. And then, um, speaking of volunteers, as we had so many um, over the week setting up the event, this coming week, April 14th to April 20th, is National Volunteer Week. And I just want to give a huge thanks and shout out to all the volunteers of our community. And that's it. Good. Councillor Um, I went to a Valley for each sheep meeting on the weekend. It was long. <laughs> <laughs> There's a craft fair coming up at our school. Coming up at our school in May. I don't know what the day they decided it would be on it, but I think it's like May 17th or something like that. We'll check that. Um, there's a student council meeting on Thursday at 12 if anybody wants to. I'll be there. Okay. This this coming Thursday? Yeah. Great. Um, spring show and sales next week. Mm -hmm. I don't know the dates, but. It is next week. And the burger contest ends on the 14th. And I also have breakfast at the sugar Good for you. <laughs> 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 Kim? Um, yeah, so uh, I attended uh, provincials for the uh, U13 18 uh, in, in uh, Ormocto. And uh, our girl our team came up in third place. So, uh, attended the eclipse yesterday. It's amazing to see. And again, thank you to all the volunteers. Um, there was countless hours put into that. And what a phenomenal event. Um, attended some training with the fire department on last weekend, uh, two days of training there, and uh, it was great training. We had the uh, center roll bath in as well. Um, toward the part of the future, uh, with the new solar system, it's pretty interesting to see see the, set, the setup up there. Um, toward the Canadian Organics and South Ridge Naval facilities. So, another yeah, another state-of-the-art facility. It's amazing. Went to Sugar Moon, but they were close. Wow! Sound good. 
They close the tree. <laughs> and then you go out on a crime day. Uh, <laughs> that is everything. That's uh, 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 solar eclipse, that was amazing. It was uh, pretty phenomenal. A uh, lot of work went in. I know it was busy over here, but in the Canada world, it was just as busy. Just everywhere was a buzz. It was really, really good. A lot of uh, out of town people, and they all had good things to say. So kudos to everybody for that. Um, as Mike mentioned, honey, when who cares? Is this Thursday at the multi club? Doors open at six thirty. All funds. People need to realize that all the funds right there stay one hundred percent local. They are local charities. They don't go anywhere. So bring your girlfriends. You just bring hundred bucks and enjoy a fun filled event. It is a lot of fun. It's a couple hours, so come on out. And I will be attending your accounts meeting on Thursday, girls. Good. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Again, I attended the eclipse. Well, I, well, I was at the at the arena with Freddie Eclipse for the event uh, with a lot of us, all of our staff, like every staff member, and all of a lot of the council. Pretty much, it. yeah, all of the council. Um, <laughs> um, Anyways, it's it great. Um, it, what I was really just blown away by I was driving through Council Bristol on the way, and the streets were so busy. There were people walking on the boardwalk. The weather was perfect, mm -hmm. and we couldn't have asked for better weather. Not a cloud in the sky. So it, it was it was really inspiring to see so many people in the downtown core. And I mean, there's people everywhere. Um, and I think we do have to give recognition to David Hunter. He brought this idea forth to the former town council, I think five years ago, um, and give recognition to the former town council of Fort Bristol for, you know, reaching out to Colonel Chris Hatfield and getting this started. And it really was truly an inspiring event. Um, the other thing that's happening on Thursday, this is a busy day, April 11th, the Andrew and Laura McKean Public Library are celebrating their 40th anniversary. So from 6 to 8, um, there's going to be light refreshments served. Mayor Andrew Harvey will be there. The Honorable Mark Johnson will be there. Um, and special guest Ella Mason from NDPLS. And there will be greetings on behalf of the McKean family from Clem and Lori McKean. So that starts at 6. Speeches are at 6.30 and it goes till 8. And again, like Councillor Harvey mentioned, the Spring Show and Sales next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, April 15th, 16th, and 17th. And the local 4-H members will be at the co-op this weekend, Friday evening and Saturday, selling tickets on a freezer full of, of beef, which they all the proceeds go to the Western Valley 4-H district. And they use the funds that they raised with the tickets to buy one of the one of the steers. And then they sell the beef, and then the rest of the money goes to the local 4-H groups. So the Western District encompasses River Valley, the 4-H group here, and Countryside, the 4-H group in Woodstock. And I think that's it for me. Good. Thank you. Uh, I'll just go through a few things. Uh, Seems like a long time ago, but the March 27th, I, I had a meeting with the Western New Brunswick Regional Service Commission, priority meeting with the RCMP, um, and the priorities are the same as last year, uh, which, you know, engagement with the community, et cetera, et cetera. So, so anyway, it was a meeting we have once a, once a year on priority settings, so uh, it was all good. We had a couple staff meetings, I know, with, with our clerk and staff, and uh, we also had a meeting with, with unlike our clerk and the, the operations director on potential 2024 capital projects, uh, big and small. So we're gonna we'll have that for council for next meeting, and uh, to have a discussion about what we what are the priorities and what you might want to do, and you know, and whatever that may look like for 2024, which is here. So we had a really great staff uh, gathering, I call it, at the Florence Inn. Uh, I was there with the staff and, and our clerk, and uh, it was really well done. And it was 
they had their meal and they talked about the eclipse, obviously, because all the staff were there except a couple. I think they, had to, they were working, at, and uh, that was good. It was uh, it's really good to have everybody on the same page, and the communication is, is golden. So those types of things. I know the clerk is. Uh, well, I can say that now. Our CAO is uh, our CAO. Amy is uh, really pushing community uh, relationship with the staff and. These gatherings once a month, or wherever that may look like, it could be doesn't have to be a meal all the time, but it could be any type of function, right? So that's good. And uh, we, I went to the opening ceremony. It wasn't really opening ceremonies, but they, they brought greetings on behalf of the district and gave us some awards at the provincial gymnastics event at the NCRC on Friday, and uh, that was a great, great event all weekend. A lot of people around on the weekend. At the, uh, for that, and uh, they were remarking. I heard a lot of remarks. I was in back in quickly Saturday just for a minute, Sunday for a minute, and they were remarking how the facility, you know, it's amazing. They think it's an amazing facility, which it is. Did a, a lot of media interviews on the solar eclipse uh, from last week to even today. Um, I had a really great meeting with Watson Hunter on the from the Hunter family on the balloon project there on Saturday and this past Saturday and before the before the event. Uh, last Saturday went to the Carlton Victoria Arts Council Jason Price concert at the high school. That was really good, uh, really good country singer. And then of course on the uh, solar eclipse event day, we it was a whirlwind day and uh, you know somebody said what, what were you doing? I said well I didn't have to do anything really it was because we have such a great staff and volunteers that had everything organized that but I was fortunate enough to have a media interview with the CBC and then I had a short lunch or breakfast story a coffee with the Colonel Hatfield and we didn't really talk about the eclipse. We talked about farming and uh, where you grew up in Ontario. It was sim very similar to here. I think that was in some of his remarks on the CBC and in the, in the farming communities and all that type of thing. So that was really good. And then we went up to the high school, in, uh, our clerk and our CAO and I. That was amazing at the high school with all these kids. And, uh, his message there was follow your dreams. And, and it was really well done. I, I'm just so amazed how that, everything was so well done on Monday, or yesterday. And then we, uh, I did one of our staff with Sharon and Kim and all of our staff with the community market. Uh, the table world, you know, the balloon launch, and then of course the eclipse itself, and then the uh, giving all the glasses, and that was a big deal. And then, and we got, I got a lot of good comments about everybody could get their glasses at the town offices or the library or even the post office. Uh, every, like you see a lot on Facebook where people were in their homes, groups of people got together and they watched the eclipse, and that was nice. And uh, so you know, all that, the whole day and that evening, and had a chance to talk to James Bollinger and Chris Hatfield again that night, and and they hung around and did the talk to staff, and it was just it was so it was just so nice and so pleasant, and, and I really think it shows that we um, I do and I said that in my speech last night that the former town of Florence of Bristol made that commitment to bring Colonel Chris Hatfield here and uh, then you know that was a good decision and and then we followed through and we implemented the plan with the staff did so and but the other thing is Colonel, or not Colonel but James Mullinger coming was a big boost to that last night's evening. Uh, I think it just kind of contrasted both speeches were kind of this and that and and I, I found it very entertaining and uh, and all that sort of thing. So I give credit to our staff for that because that was that was a new new thing, right? With Mom and so uh, I think you couldn't ask for a better day and how it went and, and it shows that we can we can organize and you know deliver on big events. And uh, that was one of the goals, right? How how would everybody come together and manage all that with big events and Hopefully, in the future, there'll be other big events in Carlton, whether they're at this facility or multiplex or back fairgrounds or wherever they may be, right? Because 
So that, I would agree. I just, and I, to echo our deputy mayor, uh, with David Hunter, I think uh, we as a council will try to, I reached out to David personally, and you, I encourage all councilors to have a conversation, and but we'll try to do something as a council for Mr. Hunter at yep. some point in the future, and uh, to recognize his, his initiative to kind of help to start this. So, I just want to mention a few things coming up. As was mentioned earlier, the, the library anniversary is Thursday night. I'll be bringing greetings there on behalf of the district. There's the uh, 100 plus women in care, as was mentioned by Councillor Watson and others. I encourage you to go to that. It's uh, it's like it's all that money. It's I don't know what, how much it is, but it could be in the range of 25, 30,000. Or it's, there's a lot of money raised that night. And it goes right to local charities, like one charity per year, right. per per event. So it's really good, and uh, it's a it's a good chance for women to get together and, and network and all that sort of thing. So on Saturday, there's uh, the Mount Pleasant is having a fundraising supper in the hall. You now. Is it breakfast? Yeah, breakfast. Sorry, did I say supper? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, it's breakfast. <laughs> yeah, fundraising breakfast. Uh, yeah. At the uh, Mount Pleasant Community Hall, and then this Saturday too, there's the uh, provincial uh, trampoline ch championships with uh, uh, at the River Valley Gymnasium, the River Valley Gymnastics, sorry, and that's at the NCRC. So that's just a one-day event, but uh, there'll be a lot of people around on Saturday, and that'll be they they were I've been told that the trampolines obviously they're going to be going quite high, could be going right up to the ceiling, and it'd be a uh, be amazing to see right so so last week was the the other types of gymnastics and uh, all those different things but it was good so spring show sales mentioned and the last thing i just want to mention was this before i meeting is uh is again the florence rotary center fundraising for the for the that back on the program for uh, on april 20th and that and that johnny Wander's playing there too so that's that's for the price of admission so that's all good. So uh, busy times, but uh, more to do, and uh, so we'll go from there. So I'll have a meet a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second. second. All good. All those in favor say aye. 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 Now you shut that off. Ha, 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 ha.